Hello and welcome to the third video in my series about Gulp and Nunchucks, in which I take apart my static homepage and yet transform it into a template-based homepage, which hopefully will be easy to adapt later on. So in the last video we learned how to use Nunchucks to create some first set of templates and yeah, in this video we'll dive a bit deeper and further break it apart, so using variables and data. So you learn how you can use variables and templates how you can set variables for each page, so basically providing data which changes on a per page basis, and then also how to provide some global data which will be applied to all the pages in the home page. Yeah, and if you haven't already, make sure to also watch the first videos in this series to get a smooth start. But now let's get coding. Now after the changes we did in the last video, we now have here two layout files which are the content layout and the slideshow content layout. And if we look at them, there's still a lot in common for both of them. So that's why we now continue to strip them down to make them use common code, so to say. And the first thing which we notice here up here in the head of the homepage, there's a lot of information, which for one thing here, the copyright and the author is doubled. Then there are the keywords those are not part of a template. Those are the keywords I want to put in from the actual pages. So the first principle I want to show you now, which you can use in Nunjax, are variables. So let's just start up here with the copyright. So a variable in Nunjax can be applied by just having twice opening curly braces and then closing curly braces. And in it, you put the name of the variable. In this case, I call it author or page underscore author. And I want to use this variable also here. Now, this alone doesn't help because we haven't set this variable yet. What I can do now, I go to the pages. Let's go, for example, to the shop where we use this template. And before the use of this extends declaration, so before I pull this template in, which contains the variables, I can set the variables. And this is done by the following call, simple set, then the name of the variable, page author, and then just the string, and that's my name. And yeah, that's basically it. Let's do the same to the other template. So just to see it in action, index, let's go up to the top here, set the variable, and then we also have to use it. So I just copy this over and insert it here. Now, if we run it, gulp, we should see that we still have my name up in the page. So let's go to the page, for example, to the shop, to the top of the page, and you still see here there's the copyright and the author with my name. Now let's also quickly apply some variables here for the keywords. So same procedure. And I call this page keywords. And then for the description, I do the same. And I can now just also copy this over to the slideshow. So here we have the description and down here the keywords. Let's just move them. And now I can use them here in the shop and also in the index. So again, let's just set this and call this keywords and description. Now let's get over the original keywords from the original shop page. So select the keywords, copy them here and get the description and also copy it over and do the same for the index. Okay, so now let's again test it, gulp, see if everything's applied. So for the index now, we have keywords and description up here, which we set up here in the pages and for the shop, it also worked. So you see, it makes sense to just define a few variables here for information which you want to 
set differently for each page and then yeah, use variables for it which you then reference in the templates themselves. Now there's one thing which you might notice here so this information this author which is used twice here and also twice here I will not change it for every page so both for the index and the shop it's the same so it doesn't make sense to set this variable each time for every page and it's quite common that you'll have some information which is common for your complete home page and this information or these variables you don't set every time you set it once with another package which you can use so you can use a package which is called gulp data to provide a set of data which is then applied to all the templates and I'll now show you how to do that first we need another package which is gulp data so npm install save dev gulp data now that this is installed the second ingredient is that we have to provide this data and I just put a JSON file into the source which I call page data.json and within that JSON file I provide the data the variables which was the page author for now and that's my name and I can extend it later with other variables which I come across during yeah, changing the templates but for now we we'll just put the page author here and you know it's not yet usable so to make it available in the templates we have to change the gulp file what we have to do is before we do the rendering we have to put another pipe here and this pipe will now use the data the gulp data which we just installed and for this we need to require it require gulp data and then we call it here to get this data loaded I provide a callback or a function which requires directly the JSON file here so source page data .json. and what I have to do I have to first write this correctly and I have to return it and then put a colon here see if the formatting is right looks correct let's also copy this pipe down here to the HTML files and now what this does so first we create a source for all the HTML pages and up here for the PHP pages then we get the additional data using this gulp data here which uses this require also for the JSON data now we have the pages we have the data and the Nunjax render which will then go into the templates and everything will already have the variables which we set in the data so what we can do now here in the pages we can remove this line and also in the shop because that's now provided already by the data now we test it and see if it still works and it seems I have a bug here so it tells me I can't find this data.json let's have a look at the gulp file seems I did something wrong with the path and yes I need to reference it like that and also down here so it starts in the actual folder where gulp is running then goes to the source and then to the page data now one thing we want to quickly change here you notice that we now have code duplication so we have this require here and down here and we do a lot of stuff to avoid code duplication in the HTML we should also avoid it here in the JavaScript so let's just do this require call up at the top here so do a const page data and require the JSON and we also don't need this return anymore and then we can directly provide that page data down here instead of using this workaround with a function and now gulp should work let's have a look at the index php at the generated file and you still see here there's my name and the same is true here for the shop and yeah imagine you have a page with like 30 static pages which you are using the same templates and you want to quickly make a change to some data 
it makes sense to have such a central data file where you have all the common information and then you can easily change it. For example, make photography, run it, and now it says copyright, microbright and photography, author, and the same in the shop. Yeah, and I think this is enough for this little tutorial on Nunjax variables. So we learned how to use variables where we want to set specific data for the pages, for the keywords description, for example, and then also how to use a central data file where we provide variables which we want to use for all the pages. And yeah, in the upcoming tutorials, I'll certainly extend that and we'll also learn how to further break down this content layout and also the slideshow content layout because still there's a lot of information. For example, here the scripts and the header, the navbar. This will be the topic of the next video. Yeah, and if you like the series so far, make sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up and also comment if you have suggestions for further videos or if you have suggestions for things I might have done wrong here because as I said in the initial video, I'm also just learning this. So it's always possible that there are better ways to do it. So just let me know and yeah, see you in the next video.